Hey everyone, Votan Matt here. Before we jump into this video, I just want to give you a quick heads up that after recording the entire interview, I went to post and I realized that I had my microphone still charging while I was recording, which unfortunately created a really bad feedback loop and a lot of static in the audio. I took some time to clean it up. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's definitely more tolerable. Um, so I really apologize in advance that the audio levels on my end aren't um, as professional as they usually are. Hopefully it's still enjoyable, hopefully you still get something out of this interview, and hopefully it's not too distracting. So my apologies for that, and thank you for your understanding. With that said, let's jump into the video. My fellow kid, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another pro player interview. I'm joined today by a very, very special guest. The actual first, I'm pretty sure the first Voltan player in Pariah Nexus to win a large event and first place and get the golden ticket. And this is none other than Dan Tran from Vietnam. So Tran, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for wanting to do this interview with me. It really means a lot. And uh, you're here to talk to us today a little bit about your really interesting list. And uh, I think there are a couple of really interesting things about it that we're going to talk about in a moment. And also just walk us through some of your games. So, Dan, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Uh, for It's night for you, but it's just morning for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, fair. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Warhammer is a thing that links internationally. So I'm doing great myself. Thank you. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, that was uh, that was probably one of the more challenging aspects of setting up the interview was just finding a time that kind of worked for both of us. That it wasn't crazy, crazy early for you. It wasn't crazy late for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm happy yeah. we ended up getting something that worked. Okay, so uh, Dan, why don't you talk us through a little bit about what you had told me before we started recording? But uh, when did you start getting into Warhammer, and more specifically, what made you pick up Votan? So um. I didn't start off Votan. Uh, I started four years ago, so Votan didn't exist then. Um, initially, I was a Tau player. Oh, very and, interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I um, I came, you know, I always liked the, the Dwarves mm. uh, aesthetics. And when finally they released Dwarves, and supposedly, supposedly, right, we were Tau and, and the Votan were allies. Mm -hmm. So because of the demiurg uh, brotherhood yeah so technically i'm not really changing faction you know in, in my mind i'm justifying this all of this <laughs> you know more reason to spend money on plastic yeah um but yeah I, I bought the whole the whole range in like one go and then uh, i bought like all three battle force boxes and i got like the maximum of every unit nice nice um, it, it's great and i've been loving it i paint them as a uh, santa claus yeah, oh my god, yes, and, it's uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they were great. I was on stream for the uh, Warhammer World Champion. Yeah, that was cool. They gave me a little shout out. Oh, nice. And uh, awesome. because of that, I also got the first place for uh, best painted in the tournament as well. So that, that was super cool. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so that has actually some of the craziest paint schemes I've, I've ever seen for an army. They're all just like Christmas themed Santa dwarves. Uh, I'll put a picture on the screen for, for everybody who's not uh, on the Discord who didn't have a chance to see it. But if you want to see more pictures, join the Discord and check that out. It's it's, it's obviously pretty cool. So you got for, best painted for that as well, which is uh, well deserved from what I've seen. Well deserved. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It was sick though, you know, first place and for best painted. That that usually never goes together. Yeah, that's like I don't know. That's crazy. You, you did everything. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you also got, I think, a, a ticket to a golden ticket, right? From that event? Yes, yes. Nice. Yes, yes. Um, I got a golden ticket, and I did get a golden ticket last year. So it will be a, nice. a re repeat event. Cool. Um, and I also played uh, at the last year, War 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 uh, Warhammer Worlds. I also mm. played a uh, Votan. So been a, yeah. been a loyal uh, dwarfs <laughs> ever since. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and you had also mentioned how you were, uh, you had said this before the, the call, but how you were the first, uh, like, I guess, like, world tournament player from Vietnam, right? Like, at the time, you got, like, a golden ticket and yes. you went to Worlds. Yeah, that's that's a huge accomplishment, for sure. Uh, and you've been working yes. since on, on trying to, like, 
I guess, like you said, bring more people and get more people involved with it and just, I guess, bring like your nationality more towards the forefront of competitive 40K. Yes. So um, I, I was the, the only Vietnamese person that went last year mm -hmm. and it, it was great, but I wanted to share this experience. So um, also it looks better when I go with people so I can drag you know, <laughs> some of my friends along. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so this year, I, I hosted uh, two tournaments in order to hopefully find more players to come. Nice. And um, because of that, and other other people in the community as well, uh, a short shout out to uh, Vietnamese community, uh, we managed to bring a total of four players, including me, so three others, uh, to World Hammer World Championship. So it'll be great this year. Nice. Nice. That's amazing. So you you are pretty involved then, just like not even just for like competitive play, but just in like the broader scope of like the community and the hobby and just getting people involved, which is I think really nice. Uh, like a lot of people just focus on like you know just trying to be the best all the time, but there's there's a part of that hobby that I, I think resonates with people across all mediums and like how you interact with the game. And so it's really nice to see that this is something you actually put forward, right? And you're trying to get more people involved and interested in it. So that, that's an awesome initiative. It's really cool to hear. Yes, yes. I do hope um, uh, that that resonates with other players as well. And it's just uh, I, the way I bring back, because not only I was the first to go, I was also crowdfunded to go. Oh, really? Okay. By the community. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So the community came together and uh, helped me pay off my plane ticket, which is you know, it can be a bit expensive flying mm -hmm. from Vietnam to uh, the U.S. It cost me around uh, to almost $2,000. Okay. Uh, not very expensive in U.S. term, but a bit expensive when it comes to uh, exchange rates. For sure. And um, because I was crowdfunded, that's why I wanted to give back to the uh, community uh, everything that anything that I could possibly uh, do. For sure. That's that's really nice. It's really sweet to hear. It's cool that uh, you guys have such like a strong network of people supporting you, supporting this whole initiative, and then you giving back to that same community and trying to get something out of it. I think that's really nice. So that's a big reason why I even started the channel. To be honest, it's just like I felt like it's it's a hobby that did a lot of good for me. And if there was a way to help give some of that good back to people and just maybe make it a little bit more accessible for others to jump in. Uh, and just kind of just get more people in, right? It's a fun game. We want more people involved with it. Um, so I think that's really nice. It's a sweet thing to do. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And quick shout out to your channel. Uh, the well, reason why I won was because I watched your videos almost too religiously. Oh my God. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm flattered. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. The, the analysis was great. All the loadout comparison was great so i even though i took sometimes suboptimal loadout but i knew the target and mm. uh it helped me i had a feel for it but your your knowledge and your video just solidify me what to do in every game like this is the primal target this is the optimal target oh you're doing something suboptimal here is that worth it you know it, it helps me help plan out my game my list uh, extremely well Oh, that's amazing. I, I'm flattered. I, I did, this is turning into an interview for me now. <laughs> Thank you so much. It, it means a lot. I'm happy that uh, you're able to get something out of it. Uh, I, I didn't realize it had that much of an impact, but it's really good to hear. Thank you. No, no. I, I watch your video like on repeat uh, on every unit like at least three times already. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh my god, you know what then, so I, I can't let you down, when the codex comes out, I'm going to have to go through all of them again, <laughs> and just make sure they're all up to date, I'm going to have my work cut out. Okay, so, um, at this event, so you ended up taking a, a pretty interesting list, and I, I say interesting, and I said this at the beginning, but there's there's a few good reasons for that, so, uh, do you want to just walk people through your list uh, right now, just like a, a little overview of what you, you brought, and then I could ask you some questions? Yes. Okay. Um, I think it had five or six. I had six data sheets, um, so not too complex there. It had um, three champion. You know, I call him boss man. He, <laughs> he hits hard. Yeah. He he does mortal wounds. He just everything. Yeah, you know, he's just him. amazing. Uh, even if he's by himself, he's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing much to say there. But I did buy two enhancement. One was um. 
a praising player. I mm-hmm. think that's that's a must for yeah. all this. Yeah. Uh, the second one is a bit questionable. Uh, a long list. I felt that I needed. Uh, okay. Every time though, I've never, I've never like it's had it much impact on my gameplay much. Mm-hmm. But I just felt like I really needed when I needed. Um, For sure. That was the the debate. But I'll I'll go down the list and and talk go back to a long list in a bit because that matters in the uh the the other units. Sure. Um. Good. Then I had two units of troops. The special thing I did uh, compared to other lists, I say not it's not very special, but it's a bit more different. Is that I equipped them with the maximum melee profile. Mm-hmm. Because um, I just felt that profile was the best into Marines. You know, okay. AP2, damage 2. That's, yeah, that's yeah. all I wanted. Because I wanted to clean up trash. If there's scouts, if there's um, any infiltrate Marines or even, you know, stealth suits, those are pretty decent into those. Mm-hmm. Um, three Sagittars. I would take the third troop if I had the points, but, you know, they are a bit expensive. So only three Sagittars and two troops. It works out great because I can put three in the into the transport and have one sticky the um have one of the troops left over sticky the uh, home objectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um then the classic, you know, uh three Earth Guards, three Hoikaton, the 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 full mm-hmm. combo that I'm yeah. going for. Although one of the um one of the Earth Guard has the teleport press. That is because I also take a unit of Thunderkin, so they can swap between the two. Is it gives me a bit of flexibility? Okay. Uh, I can either start the uh, Thunderkin in reserve or the Hearth Guards in deep strike. Just depends on the matchup and how I feel about the terrain. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. But go back to a long list. The reason why I took a long list was because um, I wanted. Uh, if I didn't take a long list, I could have swapped the Thunderkin for Pioneer, mm-hmm. which ultimately I think that would be the better choice because Pioneer is still very good. I just didn't trust the Pioneer damage at AP one, um, but it they the the job of Pioneer is to take out stragglers, not to do uh, big chunks of damage. So um, in hindsight, I would have taken the Pioneer over the Thunderkins. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that was that was one of my jump out questions. It was, how did you feel the list did without any fights? Uh, much much slower than what I wanted, mm-hmm. and the objective becomes actually um deploy homers and uh, not deploy homer, uh, establish locus right. That's mm-hmm. the new one. Yeah, uh, that becomes much harder to do, and behind enemy lines is also uh, very difficult. I had very little way to infiltrate into their back line without the uh, the bikers. I, I can hold fine. I can do primary. It's just I had a lot of trouble getting into people deployment zone. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Like, Because I guess it's like you were saying, like, if you take the three-man bike, you're not really taking it to, to be like a damage dealer. It's going to play like the sides. It's going to kill stragglers. And then it's also going to be really good at scoring um, like behind enemy lines or, or homers. Because uh, you just drop like the three bikes up and down, which helps. So yeah, that was like the first thing that jumped out at me. It was like okay, so there was like a decision here to to exclude them in in favor of taking the Thunder King. And so I guess the other question naturally is, how did the Thunder King come out? Um, <laughs> it it did okay. Uh, for an eighty five point unit, um, it didn't do too well, too much of anything. However, you know, um, it did almost won me a game against Death Guard. Okay. And, uh, but I, I, I still lost that game. Um, mm. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I did uh, have it on the flank, and it it, it did quite well uh, in terms of that. Oh, actually, it won me a game against Space Wolf as well, because uh, the it killed the um, the Space Lord. I forgot what it's called. Uh, one of the characters. Okay. Because uh, damage two AP two is uh, quite convenient into those boom uh, four models, but apart from that, it didn't do what I wanted it to do, which was cracking out um, cracking rhinos is what I specifically wanted it to do. Okay, I see. So you had designed this list to play pretty heavily into marines. You mentioned I think a bit earlier. So 
the purpose here with this yes. sniper kit is you just you jump out of you either jump out of the uh, the land fort and you crack open a rival, or you come in from reserves for one that's hiding and maybe try to pick it up. Okay, I see. Yes. And, and uh, specifically, yeah, plague marines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the pesky plague marines that hide in their rhinos. Uh, was the issue getting like delivering them to the rhino, or was it the actual damage out? The damage. The delivering was fine. Um, rhinos couldn't. It's not really an easy to hide model. I, between reserves and in in the in, I had them in reserve, so they they work out fine. But um, it just the damage wasn't there. Uh, yeah. AP two. You know, rhinos can easily get covered, especially the chaos ones. Yeah. Or their yeah. spiky bits. Um, so it it was tough for me to to effectively kill marines. Especially plague marines that were inside, uh, because I had to, you know, um, sort out the damage well enough so that I cracked the rhino, yeah. then cracked the unit inside, and usually they're accompanied by a fight first character. Mm -hmm. So I had to do all of this in shooting phase, or if we get to melee, it becomes very very challenging. Yeah. Um, especially, uh, you know, people might say, "Oh, I'm 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 designing too much into." Marine, but my biggest fear going to this tournament was Death Guard because um, that minus one, you know, hurts my list so much. Yeah. Because I'm relying on AOC and two plus save a lot. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, Death Guard is uh is a very scary matchup for for Voltan for a lot of reasons, and just like the contagion is the biggest one. Basically, no matter what they choose for contagion, hurts us badly because if yeah. they go with the save one, like. We no longer save on twos, which does hurt. Uh, and then if they go with the ballistic skill one, which reduces our, um, I think it's like by one for our DS or our, our weapon skill as well. Yes. Uh, like minus one to shoot, basically. Like we're going to be hitting natively on fives if we don't have trophies, which is, it's just brutal. Like there's nothing that's going to go through. Uh, so it's it's a tough matchup, I think, Death Guard. And, and I guess we'll we'll talk about it uh, later. That was your, your last game of the event, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel the same way about the Thunderkin. It's such a shame because, like, on paper, this is, like, the perfect unit to do exactly what you described. It's, like, 85 points, and it could potentially crack a rhino. Like, something like a light, uh, like a medium toughness transport, you know? Um, yes. But just not being able to ignore cover is, is like, really bad on this unit because you're only AP2. Uh, and then, like, if you're Marines, you pop Armor of Contempt because you really don't want to die, and now suddenly you're AP0, effectively, and you're shooting. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that, that kind of is how I feel about them as well. Like, I, I ran them a little bit when I started with uh, with Voltan. I tried to make them work, but I, I think they're really hard to, to, to put in a list when, like you said, the Pioneers are just, like, a straight upgrade, right? Like, you take that and you natively get so much more value just with the movement. Um, okay, so so you had said that the E champs uh, are pretty good alone. I was running a solo E champ in in my uh, my recent list, and I, I thought it it was really effective. I think I'm going to try including one uh, going forward. In your list, were all three accompanying uh, a squad of hearth guard in every game? Uh, yes, but I had thought about running them solo. Okay. So originally, my list had cows. Mm -hmm. Um and the the champion running solo. I I just love these champions running solo more than <laughs> uh, them leading. Yeah, know, but uh, so after funny. watching your video extensively, mm. um, the cows were were quite quite mm, uh, bad. I guess. Yeah, uh, they're not they're not effective. Mm. So I had to take them out, take the cows out, and um, it did cross my mind that I could run uh, a champion separately. But mm -hmm. I just never found the occasion to do it. But That's uh, I highly recommend running the champion by himself uh, and then have him at three because that unit is just insane. Because he can crack uh, a Chaos Knight, a War Dog, an Armature, yeah. just you know by himself. Yeah, he is he is an absolute beat stick. I, I love the e -chop. One of my, my fondest memories of him was uh, before I actually ran him solo, his whole squad died. Like, I had two of them, and both of their squads died. And there was just two E-champs left against Necrons. Uh, and 
they both ran up and charged into uh, a six-man squad or like a five-man squad of um oh what are those guys called they're like locust heavy destroyers i think or locust destroyers and like with the yeah. mortal wounds and and the attacks and like the wounding on twos and the high damage, I just wiped the whole squad with two guys. It was crazy. They're just yeah. beat sticks. So fun. And then from there I was like, maybe maybe there's potential here to run these guys solo. That was pretty nice. Yeah, and they, they uh in one of my game they just straight up one v one uh Angron and then <laughs> nuke him out. It's just oh like oh, I wound you on twos and he was surprised. I'm like, Really? I'm like, yeah, it's strength twelve, I wound you on twos. <laughs> like, oh <my> God. <laughs> That's what's funny about it too, because it, in my experience, like when he's attached to the Hearth Guard unit, it's great because you give so much durability to the squad. But in in melee the unit doesn't do that much. Uh, like, if you're trying to punch up into something that's a higher toughness than uh, your strength. But the E-Champ is all the damage. He does, like, like 60 to 70% of the damage in that swing. So it's uh, yes, it's pretty cool to see that. Uh, okay, and then my last question that I had. Uh, so much time has passed that I am late on, on the reaching out to you for this video. But was this before the Jaegers were released? Uh, this is after Jaegers, and I had I had much consideration uh, about them. Um, okay. I had a lot of consideration about them. Uh, one one of them being they cost three hundred dollars. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, honestly, if I had them, mm -hmm. I think I would not uh, run them. Okay. Not because they're bad. It's just the way the list function. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted Pioneer over Jaeger. Mm -hmm. uh, or um, a long list as well, and and I the Jaegers doesn't do what I I, I told you um, I wanted the Harkins to do, which was yeah. cracking uh, rhinos. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I just have to play more to give you more evaluation. For sure, it's just that between the scouts that uh, I get uh, between you know the bikes and the um, um, side guitars, it, it does help me build up board uh, quite easily. And people are much, even though you know they're they're prone to opposing infiltrates. People are much le like less likely to be encouraged to do that because um, of the uh, the oath ban. You know, if I if I put a nine units nine inch away from me, I would, all right, I'm gonna get four CP next turn. Yeah, uh, or five CP next turn if you want to do that. So uh, I'm not too afraid of that. It's like a trade off that I'm willing to accept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. So you just like you fully lean into the the archetype you're running of like that, from what it looks like, just like that very aggressive midfield bully that dominates on primary. Like this is what you do. Like if somebody wants to play, if somebody wants to overextend with their infiltrators, great. That's an opportunity for you to just capitalize on that and get uh, tokens. So you actually don't want to discourage that. You're hoping that they play a little bit more aggressive. Yes. Okay. I don't. I don't want people to to be too safe because I do. I do need that CP quite. Uh, yeah. Quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And my last question about the list is, uh, I counted through. I think it came out to, fifteen activations, uh, total. And I'm just wondering, like, if you felt, like, at any point in your games, particularly maybe like after round two, if it was harder for you to score action based secondaries. Yes. Yes. Um. So normal games, no, not really. Most mm -hmm. of the games, no. But against, it, it gets kind of scrappy when people know what I'm doing, especially against so uh, wall eaters. Mm -hmm. That was a very close. And you know, games with wall eaters can end very fast because yeah. um, they they get all of their unit in your face. Um, and it gets quite scrappy. I had to have a hecaton do an objective, mm -hmm. you know, do an action. And I, it got me eighty two, eighty one. Right, uh, we'll mm -hmm. talk about it early later. But that 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 um uh, that is an issue of my list. That's why I wanted three troops, but uh, you know points and all that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but definitely because of that, I, I definitely don't want to have the the Huffkin, the Thunderkins anymore. I I, de I definitely want the pioneers mm -hmm. uh, to be doing the actions. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like I, the. I think the first or second RTT I, I went to and I made a, the video on it, maybe it's been two months now. Like, I was writing something very close to this, uh, but 
I, I think I even had fewer activations, and I, I really struggled to get secondaries done, like mid-game. If I didn't draw them out in the first two turns, uh, I, I would basically run out of stuff. I ran out of steam <laughs> by the end of the game to do things. So that, that makes sense then, uh, from, from what you're saying. Uh, okay, so I think with the... Oh yes, and the Melee Hearthkin Warriors. That's the, <laughs> that's the last question now. But the Melee Hearthkin Warriors. So I, I actually think that you're onto something here. Um, because the AP2 damage 2 is, is like kind of good for for like an army that doesn't have like incredibly good melee. And just like having your troops randomly be able to charge on an objective and like actually kill something on it is pretty interesting. Um, so how, how did these guys do for you? Uh, they were great. I, I wish I could have taken more uh, again, <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, it's just it's the prime stats to kill marine. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not. Uh, I say marine a lot. I'm not just talking about you know space marine. I'm ta also talking about the chaos, uh, uh counterpart. Mm -hmm. You know rubrics marine, uh, berserkers and plague marine. Those are also very very threatening, mm -hmm. especially thousand suns. Uh, if you know that matchup, that matchup is quite scary. Yeah. Um. So the the ability to just take out stragglers is is quite good, even though you know the other gun, the the magna coil, whichever one, the six one one gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's decent at clearing horde, but honestly, between the melee and the shooting of you know ion pistol, you should have no problem clearing, uh, T three one wound trash unit. You know you should at least kill enough so that you can take over the objective. Um, the problem is when they put something a bit more meaty, and the 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 Harfkin can still you know crush that unit pretty handily, mm -hmm. and and that's why I love them so much. Also the grenade uh, aspect, yeah. So they're not they're not like a unit to be to be taken lightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have a CP in the bank, it's it's good to consider that your your humble five man Harfkin warrior squad can potentially dish out a ton of damage if it's able to get the grenades off and charge in, especially if you're running the melee profile. So yeah, like I, I agree with you. Like they're they're pretty versatile. Um uh, and it's pretty nice that we're seeing so many diverse loadouts for them. I know some people go with um is it like the Ectolharn gun, I think, or something like that. It starts with an E. So there's like that one they take. There's the six one one. That's the one I run. Uh there's the Magna Rail. I think I'm going to drop the Magna okay. Rail and probably take one melee weapon, so then, like, the Thane has it, and then also one more guy. Because uh, I, I like yeah. I like how this looks in your list. I think there's a lot of potential with that. Uh, okay, cool. So, I think that's all of my questions with uh, the list design. Now, going into the event, you, you made this list. You were hoping, like, okay, it's designed to crush some Marines. What, what else, like, in terms of, like, gameplay did you think... Like, what kind of game does your list want to play? What do you feel like are, like, the strengths and what were the weaknesses? So, again, I think you already said this on this, but um, the primary game is super, uh, superb. Uh, it's amazing. Because I have an easy time moving people off objectives between melee and uh, and range. And, you know, they can't just put stragglers on there because my five-man uh, warrior will just knock it out of the part if even if it not i'll just still take the objective so it's very nice for me to play the primary game and i forced a lot of issue again with these uh warriors because they also have sticky and i play a little bit mind game my opponent and tell them you know oh they have sticky you know, we don't kill them all right i, I, <laughs> I free up a unit to do something else yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so i love that a lot uh but yes the the problem with thunderkin over pioneer was um uh, getting to people up uh, backline, and I was afraid of playing against people like uh, Imperial Guard mm -hmm. or any list like uh, Eldar is a bit of a, a bit of a problem, but not not the biggest. Um, but mostly Imperial Guard because it have um, a lot of backline units that needs to be touched, but I can't get to it quite quite well. Okay, such as uh, between indirects and then you know long range. Uh, uh, Long range, uh, Lehman Rustlers. Mm -hmm. Those are those are prime target to kill, but they're a bit far away for, for me sure. to to touch them. So that was what I was afraid of. Uh, 
luckily I didn't play any at mech or impure regardless, so mm-hmm. uh, got lucky there. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Like the list is designed to just stomp on primary into most. I'd say like the large majority of of different armies you can play into. Of course, with like maybe Tau with longer range and like Imperial Guard. Uh, yes. Like, um, like Tau is kind of scary for that, but. Uh, yeah, so just your game plan, dominate on primary as hard as possible, and just try to, like, massively outscore them in, in, in like, board state. Okay, yes. so let's talk a little bit about the event itself. So this was a 30-player event, and you came first place, so congratulations again. Well-deserved. Thank you. Uh, and so you had five games total. Now, uh, I guess we could walk, well, maybe you could just walk us through each game. So game one, I see here you were against uh, Space Marines with Dark Angels. So right out the gate, you're against an army that you were hoping to get into, right? Like a Marine army, so that's good. But this is one that's pretty durable and good at primary as well. So I'm super curious to hear how this one went. But looking at the score, I see it was a 100-0 to zero victory for you. Is that accurate? <laughs> um, sorry to, to ruin your, your hype. Uh, my opponent... <laughs> was a no-show. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but uh, for any consolation, that matchup, I think, is not bad if you have three Hecaton mm-hmm. because the three Hecaton is, like, prime at killing four wound models. Yeah. And, uh, of course, they have AOC, but you can target a different unit. And AP2 is, ignore cover, is perfect into those, uh, those, uh, def, uh, Dark Angels. Yeah, the, knights, the knights, right? The Deathwing yeah, the knight. Yeah, yes, Deathwing knights. Um, but it will it will take some 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 time. You have to be a bit patient in the, into that matchup. But I I can't speak much about it in the tournament because uh, my opponent didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I had a feeling because I was looking at this. There was something off about this. That's why I just wanted to confirm. I was like, how does he get zero on on anything? But yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, I agree. With you. I think a lot of courts are kind of like prime into this, and then also you have like just the the redundancy of the hearth guard themselves inside. So whatever the, the yes. land fort doesn't finish off, the hearth guard coming out and killing that, uh, th- they will kill the remaining squad that's left over with shooting and charging. Um, so, and and then that also means you wiped out a significant amount of points from your opponent's list. I, I'm not sure how much they cost. I think they're uh, 235. Yeah, wow. So five are 235. So this would be good because your opponent runs out of uh, he runs out of assets real quick if you start picking up his uh, squads of Deathwing Knights on objectives. There really isn't that much else that can threaten you. Okay, cool. So this was a this was a quick one. <laughs> now let's let's talk <laughs> about game two into World Eater. So this was a tighter game. You alluded to that a little bit earlier. So it was just a, a very narrow victory of eighty two to eighty one. Yeah, I I almost lost, you know. Um, uh, took me by surprise too. Uh, the player was very nice, mm-hmm. you know. Not not to say like being mean is all good at the game, but <laughs> you know, uh, I I did misjudge his his skills a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I played a very friendly game as well. Well, I got voted best friendly too. Uh, oh, nice a shout out there. <laughs> so you are very friendly. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh. Uh, but you know, he he had a style that I did not expect people to do, and this was this is more I want to say world class style, where he will just do anything for points. It's a very aggressive, but it's not aggressive like oh I'm going to kill you. Aggressive. It's aggressive in the fact that he's spending CP, he's spending resource, he's spending. He doesn't care what he throws away as long as it gives him points. And as you can see, uh, he dominated the early game. And he was 81 into me. I was 56 on round five. Oh, so God. I was I was way behind. I was insanely behind uh, going into to round five. However, I had a feeling I was losing by round four. Um, obviously, you know, every Warhammer player, they know how that feels. Uh, <laughs> but so then I, I had to, okay, I had to sit down and plan everything perfectly from then on. And there was like, okay, no more. Um, just playing the game, feeling it. No, no, we have to sit down and plan. So it did took some time. Like I, I asked my opponent nicely, and he was like, "All right, just sit down and plan." So I p- carefully planned it, and I had to 
uh, kill all the unit, which I did, mm -hmm. um, and then proceed to have these unit while killing all the unit have the hackathon do the action. It was on Scorch Earth, okay, okay. so I had to burn an objective and then burn another objective next turn, and then I had to take into account like, oh, what if I start drone draw uh, Stormheart style? So I have to leave a unit off the objective, um, do all that, and uh, luckily it worked out. At the end, I did top deck storm hostile and um, engage on all front. Nice. So that scored me six, uh, and then the two primary was ten, and then the two burning objective was another ten. So I jumped uh, like twenty six points at the end. Okay. Which which got me the one point I needed to win. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Okay. Wow. It's quite cheeky. Yeah, so this was a this was a really close one, and so you said like the thing that took you by surprise was, like there was aggression which you did expect from world leaders, but the aggression was for points instead of for you. It was like do whatever yes. I can to get as much as I can early in the game. That's that's cool. Okay. Yes, yeah. and he played it very well because he knew he was gonna get tabled. Mm -hmm. Like he was like, I'm not gonna beat you in the in the in the head on battle. So he was like, all right, I'm throwing you know. Berserkers a way to do objective. I'm gonna pay that CP to give it sticky, even though I know it won't last. Mm -hmm. And then he he throw the master of execution onto the objective for Scorch Earth to force me to answer that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was it was masterfully uh, played nice. uh, by by the by the guy. Yeah, that's world leaders are are always a really fun matchup. I think as long as you don't. Well, I think everybody's first game into world leaders you usually get table. But then second game onwards, it's a really fun game. <laughs> Once you realize yeah. like what they're trying to do and like how they accomplish it, uh, it's a really interesting army to play into. One that like you get to practice things like pre measuring a lot, which is really really helpful, uh, just in like the, the yeah. larger game. Uh, but also just like learning about aggression and like what people do and and how to respond to that. Like you said, you had to just like. Yeah, just take like five minutes and like, you know, it's a tournament, you're on time, but like you just took five minutes, you thought about your plan, you didn't panic too much, took a deep breath and thought through exactly what you needed to do, what the best possible outcome would be for you to win and what you need to do to accomplish that. And it worked out, like all of those things came to fruition. So that's, that's really good. Uh, that's really good game engineering on your part, just kind of thinking through and, and planning ahead for what you need to win. Otherwise, it probably would have been like a loss if you didn't uh, if you didn't plan like that. Yeah, yeah, it was a uh, it was that and a bit of a heart of the cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know, for sure. It takes a bit of luck to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, okay, and then this is also the game where you had said um, Angron got killed by the E Chop. Yeah, and it and he came back right away. So that 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 was a, that was a sad moment. <laughs> uh, all that hype for nothing. <laughs> uh, I I did he did fail the charge on the following turn, so it did get neutralized the turn. Okay, so that was my my saving grace. Okay. But uh, Angron was active for for four rounds of the game. Oh no, three rounds because turn one he was hiding it. Okay, he went first. Okay. Uh, but he it was active for three rounds. And that was very very tough to 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 beat. Yeah, that's hard. Uh, did you like? How did you with two by ten warriors? I feel like you have like pretty good screening. For, for like against world leaders was this what you used them for here largely like just to like make some lines across your your deployment and just try to be safe how did you deploy going into this um so one of the problem with world eaters i i say problem maybe not really um i feel because I, I i have a experience with world eaters i feel like they have a problem cracking saggy tars mm -hmm. just just me okay. uh, because if they do go into Sagittarius, they're throwing away Exalted Egg Balance. Okay. And that unit, if they they are throwing that away, I am more than happy to throw away Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. um, but then, there's, if they're sending eight bounds, uh, that can't crack a Sagittarius. Berserkers and Rhino can't crack a Sagittarius. I, I have no problem with, um, with the initial assault. Okay, um, okay. So I just let the Sagittar screen instead of the Warriors. And then, it, of course, if it, it comes to my turn, I'll let the Warriors screen instead. Uh, if I get to a turn to move them out and then uh, position them. Mm -hmm. But uh, initially, I just have the Sagittar screen. And even the Hecaton can screen because I have no no issue with them. Um, I don't believe they can crack it turn one outside of Angron. 
Yeah, you know that's that's a good, that's an interesting way of looking at it. I like historically like going into world leader matchups. I I know like the consensus is like yeah like you know like don't don't be too defensive like deploy on the line like let them charge you because that's one less resource that you'll have to deal with later in the game if they come to you you just blow them off the table and it's true yes um, so you want to play on the line you want to play aggressive with your deployment but it's interesting that you you put the uh, the Sagittarius up front. I know a lot of people would probably try to, to defend them, but you bring up such a good point, is that at a certain threshold, like, yes, losing a Sagittar, it, it would suck, but what it costs for them to do that is very beneficial to you. Like, that's a good trade. If they send Exalted 8-bound to kill it, like, no worries. You lose some mobility, but they just lost a nice chunk of their list doing that. Yes. Okay, so that, that's um, really and cool. Yeah, yeah, and... um. Also, we have the 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 uh, uh, Terminator. Uh, sorry, I call it Terminator. Yeah. The Hearth Guard in in, in Sagittarius, right? So no matter how much they threw at me, I knew if I if they threw everything, I could counter punch and kill the whole thing, because yes, the, yeah. the the combination of 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 three Hecaton and and uh, um it was two Hearth Guards because one was in the sky. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew I could counter attack for so much more. Yeah, like you would just if they destroy the Sagittar, you just disembark from the the lad fort and you pick up the squad like reliably without any question. So that's that's good. Or maybe even two because between shooting and and melee. True, true. Okay, so that I think that's interesting. That's a good way of looking at it. Um. Okay, so very close game, eighty two to eighty one, and that takes us to game three. So game three was a was a bit more of a solid victory for you here. And I, I definitely see why looking at your list. Uh, so this was 90 to 35 against Gene Steeler Cult. So how did this yes. game go? Uh, was, I was sweating uh, mm -hmm. at the beginning. Uh, my opponent had 100 victory twice. Mm -hmm. And he, he played real opponent, not like me. right? He, he played against Sister and Admech, mm -hmm. and he had 100 victory. So I'm over here like, oh my god, this guy <laughs> must be insane. Um, I can't fandom to beating sister a hundred, you know that that's yeah, that's almost really, insane. Really hard. Yeah, but uh, the the nice thing is, you know, I play the primary very well, mm -hmm. and I know for a fact GSC does not play the primary uh, well at all. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was what I lean into, and if you, I couldn't show you the the, prop, the, the full score, but what happened was he scored zero on primary. And then I score uh, four, uh, 40 on, not, I say four, on, 40 on primary and 40 in the secondary. Oh, so yeah. um, that's what ultimately won me the game. Um, he uh, he had a lot of, six units, I counted exactly, to revive. Mm -hmm. And they, they kept reviving, but it didn't matter too much to me. It was with the new GSC revive too. Like they came back right away. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I knew that going into the to the match, so I didn't use Overwatch as a um, as a killing threat. More of a uh, I want you to think about it threat. But okay. I never actually Overwatch him because I don't want him to die and then come back right away. Yeah. With the new um, PSC revive rule. Mm -hmm. Uh, but overall, it wasn't very hard uh, game for me. I was sweating until round two because this was burden of trust. Okay. So you don't see the points coming until much later. Yeah. Right, because you have to start setting up. You have to to set the unit to guard an objective. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, once round four kicks in, I I realize I won. That's when I just like go balls to the wall, um, and get the remaining objective. But uh, round one to three, it felt close because the point wasn't coming in uh, that fast. Okay. Uh, and so like I'm just looking at I'm looking at the list right now. I just pulled it up out of curiosity to see this. Uh, so it's like just big bricks of, we got the Acolyte hybrids, uh, looks like there's big bricks of uh, neophytes as well. Yeah, so I, I think, and then there's some vehicles. So what did you judge going into this? I'm curious. My judge? Yeah, your judgment tokens. Oh, my judgment. Oh, uh, I just went to all to the transport. That, okay. That's like, all right, I know you got to bring them up, uh, bring them to me. Mm -hmm. And I did eight a transport and get my 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 free CP that way. Yeah. Um, he did make a fatal mistake, though, a very big mistake. He did not screen properly. Okay. 
so that my my five men got in in got uh, got deep strike in and able to take a, a shot at his uh, there's a character that reroll um revive okay. I, I i don't know what it's called sorry uh, he has a character that every time you revive you can roll one you can reroll a revive once per round sure okay. once per turn uh and i i managed to take a peek at that and you know five termies will just go <laughs> like just turn through a unit of gsc like, yeah. Oh, yeah there's no tomorrow and um uh, and then he he was lu- luckily he standing on objective too so that was like prime Ooh. a lot of mistake went for for that to happen but uh, I I kept a uh, capture on it yeah uh, good. And took advantage of that and you know I turned on the CP to to double um sustain mm-hmm. so he he was having a bad time after that happened and that was round two yeah I I think this is this is a fun matchup for your list just because of. Like the amount of hearth guard you have, like you said, they they absolutely shred through squads of GSC. They melt them. Yeah, he could not hold a primary. Yeah, if he touches it, you just you pick up whatever's on it. Even if like you don't even need pokins for how low toughness and uh, and low wound and everything these guys are, like the the infantry units. But if they do touch, a praising glare, and then you just pick up the squad no matter what for sure. Um, so I I think this is this is cool. This is a fun matchup, I think. Uh, so it looks like your your list really worked well for for what your goal was because th- this is one of those matches where you got to just dominate on primary. Yes, it was uh it was very textbook mm-hmm. to say the least. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, and so with a solid win over GSC, you move into game four. Uh, and this one was also quite tight. So this was eighty eight to eighty five against Space Wolves. So how did this one go? Was this one of those um, the Wolf Jail lists where they try to pin you down? Yes, yeah. yeah, Wolf Jail, all, all three of them. <laughs> you, you love them, <laughs> um, but Hecaton, surprisingly, once again, perfect into four wound bodies. Uh, the AP two is a bit wasted because they're in wound four, but that just means he can't turn on AOC to to save them. Um, the minus one to hit and minus one to wound was unexpected, but I did, you know, put them all on judgment, so it didn't, it didn't uh, hurt too badly when he turned that on. Okay. Uh, the it was easy to kill the wolf jail. It was very easy to kill the unit. The problem was it usually split into two character units, mm-hmm. which became much much harder to kill, mostly because activation but also one of the wolf has the uh it can blank a damage every turn okay and then they are at odd wounds like seven five it just makes it feels very difficult to to get a hold on them uh, quite nicely but the 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 wolf jail itself was easily dealt with between hecaton and the player uh actually told me you gave me a lot of thinking to do because the other game, he just rushed in and like the game was over. Hmm. Um, so what I did in that game uh, was I jumped out. You know, when the when a wolf when he present me with a target, I would do the combo, uh, uh, jumping out and then shoots uh, with the uh, term Harfkin terminators, mm-hmm. and then uh, jump back. And then um, after that, I would jump back into the hecaton, and then the next turn I would do it again. Basically, I was re- rehashing that combo specifically to kill the the wolf units, okay. and and I took out the wolves all the time. Okay, so you you really just deployed on the line here with the land forts again, and you just you let him charge you. He wouldn't be able to kill a land fortress, but he would pin you. And then on your turn, you would just disembark, shoot, and wipe the squad. And then just, you let that happen yes. for like two turns. And you were okay with sacrificing like primary at the start of the game, knowing that you'd be able to easily recover after you dealt with uh, the the thunder. Yes, and this was push the foe, Mm -hmm. so primary wasn't like a a big deal at all. Okay, okay. So that 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 was really into my favor. Um, Push the foe was important there because if it was not push the foe, say take and hold, Mm -hmm. I think I would lost handily. Mm-hmm. But because it was push the foe, you know, you can catch up with... It doesn't matter how much he holds. He holds more. 
you know, I could hold four objectives and it's it's only eight points. Yeah. Okay. So that was nice for me. Okay, so you uh, you put the tokens on the the three squads of cavalry, so the three Thunderwolves, and uh, it looks like you had a, a vindicator. Was that your other target? No, it was the scouts. I think. Oh, okay, the scouts. Okay, so you were hoping he well he went aggressive with them and you were able to uh, to try to pick them up. Yes, but he didn't, so uh, I didn't get my CP there. Very, very, very calculated player. Yeah, yeah, he didn't yeah. went all in. He didn't went all in because if he did, I think I think I would have taken out uh, all three of them uh, between the Hecaton, at least completely neutral them. Mm. And um, his his only downside was AP one. He had a lot of AP one, so my um, void armor AOC mm. was uh, insane into yeah. his army. He basically bounced off my my stuff all the time. Yeah, 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 that's nice. Except okay. for his character, his character was quite, quite annoying to deal with, especially when they split into two different units. Yeah, the characters are are pretty efficient. They 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 cause a lot of trouble. Um, because uh, you I kind of you don't want to send a hecaton to kill a character because that's mm -hmm. it's not a not a value trade. But I had to do it. Um. Also, not just the beam. Uh, I forgot the even the uh, AP one damage two the um, twin bolter, mm -hmm. uh, the heavy bolter, right? Twin heavy bolter. Yeah. Those, those were also very good into the wolf guards. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think the the twin bolter, like uh, as funny as it sounds, I think anybody who shoots um, a, a platform that has one big gun and then little guns <laughs> will tell you more often than not it's the little guns that do all the work. <laughs> than the big one and that's usually what i was like the twin bolter is is insane it really it really does quite a bit uh okay. yeah yeah and that that's also the matchup came down to you know it was push the foe and three point different so it did came down to a primary objective which i had to kill more mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't the hardest thing to do but it was close because of that okay yeah so i think that's good so i mean you basically you assessed what the actual match is, which is important because depending on what mission you're playing, how you approach that game is going to be a lot different. And what you did here is you saw that it's Purge the Foe, and you saw that you're playing against Wolf Jail, and you want him to charge you because he was going to bounce with the Armor Contempt. He won't be able to touch you. And then in return, you'll pick up a unit pretty reliably. And even if he splits with the character after, that's just the second unit that's on the table now for you to pick up later. So I, I think yes. you, you did a great job, like just assessing like the game plan, right? Like what what do we have to do here? It's okay to not be on objectives for the first few turns. You don't get that much of a lead on this mission, so you know what? Charge me. Let me dwindle down your resources, and then I'll start playing the game. Uh, so I think you did yeah. a, a great job at just assessing that and, and executing your plan. Okay, so that takes us now to game five. So this was arguably the most difficult game of the uh, the event from what i see um and it yes. was 39 to 56 against death guard so it was your only defeat against the death guard at this event um so talk us through this game so this was my my best friend uh okay playing to the event nice uh he actually taught me how to play warhammer oh wow so nice kinda, kind of the disciple into the master uh, kind of thing <laughs> okay cool um, and I, I I train with him all the time, and I've never beaten him mm -hmm. with him on Death Guard and Voltan. Like, this matchup was nightmarish. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've played seven games and lost all seven. Oh, my God. Um, this matchup was so insane because I, uh, I was trying different lists all the time, 30 Terminators. Uh, what if I just don't play Terminators? It got, it got even worse. Mm -hmm. Um this was also the main reason why I took the uh, the Volkai gun because I knew he had a Rotigus. Okay. And that guy was a pain in the ass. Yeah. Okay. So he's and uh, in, uh, I actually some chaos demons. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that list was very very painful, and um, I tried Grim Demeanor. Mm -hmm. It was it's good, but it's not. It doesn't do much. Like if he mm -hmm. wanted to, he could focus it down. And For the sure. unit doesn't really add much survivability, even though it ignores the minus one to save. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't felt like I needed it. So I ultimately, because of the playtest, I took out Grim Demeanor, even though it kind of counterintuitive. Uh, you know, you need that for that matchup, but 
after testing, I don't think you need to. Mm-hmm. You just play it. I I will say though, this game I almost won, um, because I chose to play the secret mission. Okay. Which is uh, deliver my warrior into his backline. Okay. Okay. I think that was the one. I don't I don't remember the name, but it was your battle line into the enemy backline. Okay. And and like I said, I had a problem doing that. But uh, before we get to that. Uh, talk about the game as a whole. I did table him, okay, and then, uh, but this is very similar into every other game. I table all my opponents um, <laughs> playing this list. This list had insane firepower. Like yeah. everyone was shocked by the amount of fire I had. I was like, "Holy shit! You do that much damage? Like, yeah, I can. I I, I do a lot of damage. If you give me the the target, right? It's, the problem is I don't have the range to do the damage." Um, but, you know, he went first, so that was nice. He walked into me. I get to do my thing. But the biggest problem turn one and two was that I couldn't crack the rhino effectively. You right, know, yeah. like I couldn't um, crack at the unit inside because they had the fight first uh, character. So I couldn't line it up so that a big unit, a strong unit like Hecaton or a warrior shoot into the Plague Marine. I had to use them to break in break the rhino, which was very very unfortunate. Um, but it it still worked out in the end that uh, I almost won in the in the point that I had to disembark from the I I put the kin the the warriors into the hecaton, okay, and I had to roll a three plus to uh to get in uh, in advance to get into the deployment zone. Mm-hmm. Um, I got out of the Hecaton. I had to roll the uh, uh, leadership check. Okay. I failed that, and then I rolled three plus. I got a two, so I I lost the um the the, uh, oh. the, <laughs> the game. Yeah. That's unfortunate. <laughs> but if I if I had that, I I would have won. Uh, uh, and all and, and uh, I think I would have won. Right, thirty. No, no. No, no, but we 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 made it in a way that I would have won, but so I, I just stopped playing because that was the the deciding role there. Okay, yeah, that, that's fair. I I think like we we both spoke about this a bit at the start, but Death Guard like in general is is kind of a tough army for for us to deal with effectively. Uh, they're, they're really good at kind of just shutting down your efficiency, whether it's like your durability, your shooting output. Um, and they're always posing like a really big threat with like fight first, and your ability to interact with them is what's reduced. So the better at killing you eventually when you, uh, you get into contagion range. Also, they have surprising amount of damage to weapons, which is mm-hmm. like perfect into earth guards. Yeah, 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 yeah. They do, they do. Uh, and they the got... flamers are AP two damage two. I'm like, oh my god, how am I gonna deal with this? Yeah, the flamers are insane, right? And they're like anti infantry, I think, as well on most of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, Rotagus also has a flamer with Devas wound, so okay. that's insane. Oh my god, yeah, that's that's. Tough. It was a, uh, yeah, it was Overwatch galore. Um, my my luck side, my only lucky thing I had was the the Rotagus keep failing his battle shock. Uh, so so I, I I managed to kill him by by using the champion. Nice. That was nice. nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's always a, an epic moment on the on the table. Yeah, champion did a lot of work for me this tournament. Um, love him. Can't can't go without three now. Yeah, he they're so good. Like the I I've actually not I've I've honestly never ran a cow yet in my lists, and the reason for that is because I only run the five man squads of terminators. So. I, I don't think the cow is I don't think the cow personally is good at all, but I don't think he's no. he's good with a, like he's even worse if you run him with a five man. So maybe you could, like I see the logic behind taking him with a ten, like just for the volume of fire and you maybe don't need the E champs damage because you have ten hearth guard instead of five. But uh, with the five I, I especially think like you always take the E champ for sure. Yeah. Okay, and boss uh, man. yeah, <laughs> the boss man. <laughs> uh, and what was uh, the mission? I'm just curious. What was the mission for this one for game five? Oh, you know what? It escaped my mind. Um, okay. I put you on the spot with this. Don't worry if you if you can't recall. Let me let me. Uh, oh, it was not terraform. Give me 
uh, just a minute. I yeah, no worries. No I worries. do have it. Mm-hmm. There it is. Okay, linchpin fog of war. Linchpin fog of war. Okay. 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 Yes. Yeah. Oh, so... uh, I guess I should say something else too. Yeah. Uh, deployment. Mm-hmm. Um, with this list, I actually love tipping point a lot. Okay. Like, uh, tipping point was my favorite deployment uh, with this list because in search and destroy and other other load uh, other deployment, um, it's kind of hard to. To high three hecaton, and sometimes I just yeah. have to be like, "Here, go ahead, shoot my hecaton." I don't, I don't care. But realistically, I would like to to hide them more, mm-hmm. you know. And tipping point does give me that nice uh, area for me to be safe in. Okay, so this is this is a good opportunity to ask. So, like every game, you started all three on the table. Yes, all three hecaton on the table. Okay. Uh, okay. Wasn't too afraid of it dying. Mm-hmm. But it did die turn one to to the vindicator of the space move, so that was oh wow. sad. But that yeah. was like an odd thing that happened. Yeah, uh, that's... his vindicator did nothing else the rest of the uh, the game. Yeah, that that's not probable. That that shouldn't have happened. But yeah, that's interesting. Okay, okay, uh, and like so. Okay, so I have two questions. We're we're getting sidetracked. Hold on. So for the Death Guard matchup, uh, because it was linchpin, there's like this innate pressure to kind of like protect your backfield. Uh, without having three bikes to like screen in the back, did you struggle a little bit with this? Was this like a concern that he just brings the Death Shroud Terminators down and like just takes your backfield objective and you lose linchpin? Uh, it was not because I I felt that the 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 Terminators were quite fat. Mm-hmm. Not to say that, not to shame them or anything. <laughs> it's just they take up a lot of space. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, five five warriors is more than plenty to to lock it out. Okay, uh, okay. That is what how I felt it, and that was the reason why I I didn't have the. Uh, it took me a while to get them to the other side because I kept them uh, there until the uh, the terminator came down, which he he masterfully played so that he it came down on turn three until he really needed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I ended up killing them all the same, so. Uh, but I mean, it did took out all, almost all my units, and it was a no- I couldn't hold primary uh, mainly because of the um, minus one to save. I I had no unit that could hold it effectively, and that's how I got to play um the secret instead. And I think going forward uh, in that matchup, you will plan for the secret uh, as a as an alternate win con um, more than basing on primary. Okay, that was my second question. It, it was like, what kind of general advice can you give for like the Death Guard matchup? Because it does seem to be one of our harder ones. So you would advise like just kind of try to bake in a backup plan right out the gate for your secret mission and just like assume you're going to be behind on primary. I think so, because they also struggle to do uh, secondary, you know. And I think we actually do better secondaries than, than they do because um, we got pioneers we got warriors they're quite effective at doing secondary so um i my one of my i should have known this earlier but now that i know i think it's great uh, you should bake in that secondary uh that um secret objective uh, from the game start uh okay and, and i guess like so looking back at like this event as a whole what was like what would you suggest like as kind of like some Maybe like how you approach deployment in these games. There's just like a general overview of what your deployment plan was with with a list like this. Um, I'm gonna be straightforward to you. There's no rocket science to it. You just mm-hmm. go on the line and you go zoom zoom. But uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, there there is some thought to it. Not not just you know on the line all the time. Uh, you will need to plan how to get your tokens. Uh, your the mark units as soon as possible because okay. that early CP is really how you get your lead and then get and hold your lead for the whole game. If you don't get that early CP, it can be hard. I mean, it's only one CP less effectively, but the early CP uh, has a lot of weight compared to much later, especially if you go second. Mm-hmm. Um, if you get a late CP turn, it becomes your your influence on the game become less effective right okay so 
plan those scout units. Uh, so I try to give the scout unit deploy last, so so, so I can uh, have a plan to mm -hmm. where to um, get that CP. Mm -hmm. But the Hecaton, don't be too afraid. AOC cover, not much can get to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. And so usually, if you deploy Hecaton the line, people are more afraid. Um, so they will actually try to hide their stuff. <laughs> you know, little mind games here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the line fort can tank quite a bit. It's it's pretty durable. I think into like 90% of matchups, you don't really need to be afraid. Um, I, I'd say maybe like off the top of my head, like Tau is probably one where you yeah, probably want to be... Just a hammerhead, really. Yeah, like, like there you, you want to be a little bit more defensive with your positioning on it. But yeah, like usually just be more aggressive with it and, and use it as an actual like bully, right? Like get on the primary with it and push people off. Because uh, it's it's it could yeah. tank quite a lot, uh, and okay. uh, I there's there's another thing I, I guess I want to give advice. Uh, people are afraid to lose things on this list. Don't be too afraid, because mm. they will kill you. It's just the first hecaton will die, the second ton, the second hecaton might die, the third one never dies. Mm -hmm. I just don't know why. That's just how my game is. <laughs> okay, okay. So deploy pretty aggressively in most cases. And, and like put your scout downs last so that you can take advantage of trying to pick up one of those judge targets that's out of position or they can get an angle on. And then from there, yes. just kind of start pushing things onto objectives. Okay. Yeah, we uh, we we line them up and we go straight forward, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's nice. That's cool. Okay, okay, great. Uh, okay, so uh, so Dan, I guess like closing thoughts on on the event and like your list. Um, you have kind of spoken a little bit at the start as to like kind of like some changes you would make taking out the um, Thunderkin and putting in the Pioneers instead. Any other changes you'd be looking to make with this? Um, any other thoughts on your list overall, how it performed, what you maybe want to do differently if you have to run another event? Would it be a similar list? Would you go a different route? What are your thoughts? If I had another event, I would run a similar list. But, but, uh, I would say, uh, taking a look at your video, and not just your video, um, also the uh, other winners, mm -hmm. the Berserkers is, is, is getting on there, on the horizon. Mm -hmm. You know, it's getting take a, a lot of attention from me. And maybe I'll cut down the Huff Guards for, for that unit. Okay. Um, but it, it does give me a lot of thinking because um, they're not exactly the, the... You have to be quite delicate. With the uh, berserkers, because mm -hmm. I believe they're they're good. It's just unlike other units, they require you to trade up, so you have to get your value worth. Um, but if you can do that, they're they're a great unit. Yeah, they're uh, like hearing what you're saying about like your game plan for like trying to just pick up something that's deployed too aggressively, like infiltrators. I I can't even say the amount of times like that's exactly what the berserks did for me so many times. So. For most ah. cases, like with a Berserk squad, you could like turn one, get out of a Sagittar, charge something on the other side of a wall like of a ruin, kill it, and like you're safe behind your side of the wall. So it, depending on, of course, what they put and how far away they stand. I know for uh, like GW trade, it's like one inch for, for the gap. But um, yeah, like you could effectively, like, and they'll obviously kill, like, um, I don't know if you put like, what are Necron flayed ones, right? Like those little yeah, yeah, those are crazy. yeah, those little guys like on the other side. Like you'll pick them up, like for sure, and then you're safe. And then like next turn, maybe you go back into Sagittar and you stage behind the wall, and now you get like that extra movement. So I think they're really good for that, dude. They're pretty cool. Uh, they're flexible too because they could do sec secondaries for you. Uh, I'm considering trying to yes. get a second one in, but I I'm not quite sure how to fit it. I, I think I'm on the same line of thinking like you, with kind of just cutting a little bit of the. The damage out, like maybe with the hearth guard brick. I, I think I'm already down to just two, though. I don't even remember what my list was. I think I'm down to just two squads. Yeah, um, on, on your video, you only had two. Yeah, yeah. I was not, so I, I have to see where they would fit in because I think they have a ton of value and they're they're pretty good. Um, so definitely <laughs> second your opinion of trying to squeeze them in. I, I think they, they have a, play, a place in your list to play. And I think in this archetype that you're running, they'd be pretty good as well. Yes, and um, also uh, on WTC TC terrain, like you said, they're, I'm sure they're quite 
they're much more uh, valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually play on G up terrain, so it's okay. a bit less because we have more shooting angles yeah. and less yeah, terrain yeah. to hide on. Yeah. Um, so they become less valuable, but I, I still see the merit in taking them. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I I think that's interesting. Like the different terrain layouts, like because like you said, like on GW terrain, it's completely different. Like playing three land force versus on WTC, like you you basically yes. will never struggle to hide them, but it'll be a little bit harder to get like good shooting avenues, right? Like good shooting lanes versus GW, which is like I, I think it's like pretty good, but it's it's relatively more open than than WTC for sure. Yeah, you have more, you have bigger lanes. Mm-hmm. Um, you have less lane, but, you know, uh, the lanes are bigger, so yeah. that's why you have less lane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, very long lanes as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So it's interesting to see how, like, all of these things just kind of come together when you're looking at list design and when you're thinking about what you want to run and the role you want everything to play in a list. Uh, so, I, again, I think you did a great job designing it. Uh, it's... It's super similar to what I ran at the event, so uh, for sure I yes. like it because it's the same archetype that we're going for, just dominating on primary. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so no other changes, everything else would be good, and just swap in the uh, the pioneers. Overall, are you happy with uh, how things went at the event? Yeah, I'm. I'm super happy. Uh, me and my best friend got first and second, so nice. Yeah, what can awesome. I say? Yeah, that's amazing. Especially, yeah. And then I, I somehow magically, you know, became the, the best friendly and most and best painted. That's like, how does that happen? I don't understand. I, I was expecting to get the most toxic player. Like, <laughs> <Yes. know. laughs> well, just in the just in the, the short hour that I've known you, I, I can say you, you are an extremely kind person. So I, I could see it coming. And from the Thank pictures you. I've seen of the Santa uh, Berserk, uh, the Santa Voltad, I, I think that it's well deserved as well. Very unique and and well executed uh, plays here. So if people are curious, you could check that out again in the Discord. It's free of charge. Just join in, and uh, I'll put a picture and a link in the uh, on the screen and in the description for you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Uh, okay, Dan. So uh, what else is uh, is going on for for you? Like, are, are you attending uh, the world's event at the Golden Ticket? Uh, are you? What's next? What's in the works? So uh, I am going to Walls, but I have one sad news to say to you guys okay i will not be representing the votan oh, because no. <laughs> because uh there's no one who's going for my community for the sigmar uh events okay, okay. so this year i'm going with, i had i also have a golden ticket in sigmar nice um, not to brag no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but uh yes uh i am going for sigmar this year to build up that community nice. um so this year I will not be going for forty k. Very mm. um, sad for that. I did pass my ticket to my best friend, nice. so that was another great thing. Nice. Um, so he and I am going, and then two other people. The the three people will go for forty k, and I'll be the sole uh, Vietnamese for um, Sigma this year. And then again, you know, hopefully next year I bring more gang to, to the event yeah. and make it more fun that way. No, that's awesome. I I definitely look forward to seeing to seeing your name again <laughs> on the channel when I look at one of your lists, and of course, just seeing that community that you worked so hard to to cultivate and, and kind of just bring forward and bring into the competitive scene and just into war gaming in general. I think it's a great great initiative. I I really respect it a lot, and I think you're doing a fantastic thing, just giving people uh, an avenue to get into this, right? I think that's awesome. I hope. Oh, so. yeah, that'd be great for sure. So, if uh, if people want to maybe learn a little bit more about you or a little bit more about the events you run and things like that, if you're interested in attending, where could they find out? Where could they get in contact with you on? Uh, I guess I'll give you a link of okay. my uh, my group Facebook. It's like a, a little community we have going, mm-hmm. and uh, we post news there. there. And sometimes seldomly <laughs> and I, I'll just link to you to you my Facebook that's how you can get contact with me um, I do have a lot of contacts over the US last mm-hmm. time I went you know a lot of friends another thing I want to shout out and you know <laughs> competitive players usually you know they think competitive players are quite sweaty mm-hmm. um, I know I am but uh, <laughs> but the the, pl- the the players I met at the world's tournament they were very very nice and that and not only that, you know, their army were were insanely good looking too. That's like, awesome. It's not 
it was not the, the stereotypical, you know, mm. uh, gray army, we here to win kind of kind of vibe I got when I went to the world championship. So that's that, that's, awesome. that's a nice experience if everyone yeah. uh, can experience that. That would be great. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah, I uh, I haven't been to like a big event yet. I haven't even been to a GP yet, but I, I have one coming up in November and it's my first one. I'm super oh. excited. I'm going to be representing the Voltan, so we'll see how they do. And the three E champs. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. That would be great, yeah. All right, Tran. So, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for coming on the channel. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Uh, oh, yes, I, I forgot to ask you. Sorry, I'll edit this out. But did you want to, do you have like a, like any services you want to shout out or something like that? Uh, not just your channel, really, man. Your channel has been like <laughs> the best uh, helpful for me uh, resource so I can um, evaluate my decisions much better. Well, I, I appreciate not just that. in list building, but also in, in gameplay. Hmm. Thank you. That really means a lot. I, I really appreciate that uh, you, you found it useful and you're taking something away from it. I just wanted to try to make something, make like a little community also, right? Like in a lot of ways for, for people to just kind of connect yes. and, and get involved with uh, an army that they think is cool. Because I think Voltan are pretty cool. Uh, so that's, that's yeah, good. Yeah, uh, we, have, we have a lot of saying, you know, uh, in my country, there's a saying, uh, uh, a gentleman, when he takes revenge, you know, ten years is not too late, and you know I usually throw that out when I play because we we hold grudges pretty hard. <laughs> oh, it's very thematic for the army. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Dan. So thank you so much for for coming on the channel once again. Uh, it was great to learn a little bit more about yourself, about the army, about the archetype, and just how you've been running and, and successfully running Voltan as a whole, just your philosophy for the game and what you've been trying to accomplish. And of course, learning more about your amazing community that you've been cultivating in Vietnam. Uh, and like you said, if people are interested in joining that community or learning a little bit more about it, we'll have a link down in the description below uh, where you could uh, check that out. It's going to connect to uh, the Facebook page that Dan has running for his events. And you can learn a little bit more about that and get uh, join the community if you'd like as well. Yeah, thanks for having me. And, you know, uh, it, Votan's a pretty honest army, and me winning is just honest work. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is that is very well said. <laughs> that, is, that is very well said, my friend. All right, thank you again so much for coming on, and thank you, of course, to uh, the wonderful viewers for tuning in for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and as always, I will catch you all in the next video.